A first time buyer gets an amazing deal using our car tips. Welcome back to the home of super high intensity training and the homework guide team, YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the homework guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today, we're talking to a first time car buyer, Matt, who goes by BD on YouTube. We'll talk about that a little bit in the end. He's 22 years old, used the homework guy videos to help him get through a recent car purchase. Matt wrote in a comment, for a 22-year-old buying my first car, I'm pretty happy with the end result. If you want input for a video on what it's like being a young first-time buyer using your advice, I'd be happy to do an interview and provide some feedback. Well, we have Matt here with us today. He did a fabulous job using the Homework Guide tips. Matt, welcome to the Homework Guide channel. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. I'm very happy to be here. You know, we've done a lot of different kinds of shows in the past. This is the first time we have featured one of our car buyers for the audience. So you're number one on the docket there, Matt. How about that? That's literally sick. That's the best form of like first in the comment section you could ever have. There you go. It's sick. Well, if it's okay with you, we're going to take the opportunity to not only learn about your car buying experience, but we're going to help construct this in a sales process for our viewers so they know what considerations they should be making as well. So to help our viewers, we'll follow a basic process that any savvy car person would use um, using car buying homework. So I want to start number one with budget and just ask you a couple questions. Uh, did you look at the total cost of ownership? So things like vehicle price, car insurance, fuel costs, maintenance, repairs, etc. when you were thinking about the type of car that you wanted to purchase? Yeah, I absolutely did. So I didn't go into like, what is this going to cost monthly for gas or like repairs specifically? I wanted a car that looked okay and was very reliable. So I looked at repair costs in general and like reliability ratings and reviews and stuff like that. And I narrowed it down to three different brands. And that was Toyota, Honda, and for me, Mazda. Instantly removed Toyota because I just didn't want another one. And the Mazda had really good reviews. It had really good like durability. Just like when I did look up repair costs, it looked very low. I don't think I looked to do insurance enough. I should have, but I'm grateful for my parents who helped me and they did get me good insurance rates. So it was pretty reasonable to insure. And that's how I went about it. So I didn't really break it down as detailed as I could have, but I, I set a price for myself. So coming just out of college, I didn't want a brand new car. I wanted at least two years old and I wanted somewhere in the 10 to 13 range for my entire car. Well, that's perfect. So I want to pick out a couple points here. You mentioned about depreciation. So you got a two year old car. So you aren't taking that big hit on the first couple of years. Very smart thinking there. And then you talked about maintenance, repairs, reliability, that sort of thing. Matt, as a first time buyer, you're already a leg up on many people because take a typical couple, husband and wife, they say, you know what, we should go car shopping today. And they walk out the front porch and they head off to a dealership without any of that kind of uh, thought you just put into your vehicle selection before you even got there. So well done on that end. How did you start this? Did you start it um, online or did you actually visit some dealerships? How did you do it? Again, I picked my, my three brands. So I, I did start online. I was like, I know Toyotas are more reliable. I know Hondas are just as reliable, but like, I really want to look into this Mazda thing. Like I'm a young guy and like, this is a car I like to look at. And it's sure. not like I'm wasting a ton of money. Like this is a pretty reasonable car. And I had, I actually had a bunch of friends too. So I'm not very inclined as a car guy. And they were like, as long as you get the newer engine, you're good. Like it's a good car. So I got a little bit of advice from them, but I mainly used the internet. And then I started looking up like okay, here's the Mazda dealerships near me. Here's the different listings. And honestly, one day I just was driving home from my friends and it was like one of those Sunday showcases and I went for my first test drive. And I was like, yeah, I like the Mazda 3. So let me tell you something, a Mazda 3, good selection. One of the guys here on the homework guy team actually is driving a Mazda as well. So there you go, that's a great car. And, it, and it's a reason that he selected it as well for its reliability and the same advice that your mechanics uh, gave you. So. Well done on that. And then, so now that you had this Mazda narrowed down, you stopped in at the dealership. I want to mention a comment that you made because you said you got this for um, a middle value of private party. And I want you to explain a little bit about how you got the uh, car for the price that you did. I found this price listed at 13.9 on a 2017 Mazda 3 at this dealer. That was like 
the high end of what I was willing to even go to a dealer to look at. Like if I could negotiate 12 and a half for a 2017 Mazda 3, I'm going to be happy. In one of your videos, you said it was a grand or two grand over the lowest private party trade-in value. Correct. Which I took from you and I said, that's the number I need to reference. And like, maybe I'll only get it within two and a half, as long as it's not four or five or even eight. Like I saw some listings that were like 18K. That was way too much. So that's where I started. And just to get back to what I was saying, I was going to check out a 2017 with roughly the same miles. And I got so lucky. When I went to the dealership, I was checking out this car. I took it for a test drive. I was happy with it. And I asked if they had any other Mazdas. And they said, we do have one. It's a 2018. So I was like, okay, I, I'll go check it out. Found it. It was the exact same thing. Almost the same miles. It was with like, within like 500 miles. I was like, what's the price? And the guy stuttered a little bit and said 13.9, which was the same listing price as the 2017. And I was like, right. what? <laughs> what's wrong with it? Can I have the car back? Like, can I, can I inspect this? Like, what's wrong with it? I checked it out. It had been in a very light accident, but no, no airbags deployed. I couldn't notice any of the details. My mechanic checked it out over the day and he confirmed that I did my homework. Like I did it good. Like this is a good buy. They hadn't updated the listing price because this car hadn't been listed online yet. And I think the sales guy fumbled and said 13.9 when it should have been higher because when they showed me the car facts, when they showed me like their internal listing, it was at 15.4 on most of those papers. And I was like, I'm running with this car. Like this is a good <laughs> car. Only about $900 over budget and a year newer. Because you had done the homework beforehand, you recognized the value the moment you saw it. That's how powerful information is. A lot of people, Sometimes we'll run into these situations where there is a really great deal there, but they don't know. In fact, I had a friend um, message me earlier today asking about a vehicle he thought was a really great deal, and that vehicle was $10,000 overpriced. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you, like <laughs> way off. So I was like, no, not even close. And he, and he hadn't done any homework at all. No, you were in real good straights because you knew what cars were worth and, and you had done enough homework. That's how valuable the homework is. Now, I want to jump off price for just a little bit. Did you have a vehicle that you traded in or was there any trade involved here at all? No, nope, no trade in because I had been bumming off my brother and taking his Toyota. So he finally said, nah, I want my, can my car back. And that's what prompted me searching for cars. Always separate the trade from the car deal itself and negotiate that entirely separately if you're going to trade it in at all. So people should always do that. Get way more money out of the car. So let's talk about cash down. What decisions did you make about cash down and what percent did you put into the car deal? I had more than 20% ready, but it was in like a stock market account because I, I do have a few stocks. That's how I was preparing for this. I was like saving money away for a while. Beautiful. Um, and the most that I could do just with like liquid money at the time was 15%. It was $2,000 down. Sure. I haven't even gotten my first payment yet and I fully plan on just putting 6,000 right away. I think that's roughly 45% down as soon as I'm done with the first payment. Well done. And yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. You know what, all you have to do is practice a little bit of due diligence, um, some financial responsibility in your life from the time you're younger. And when you're 22 years old, you can put six grand down on a, on a car like this and have, as Matt just pointed out, 45% down. So that's beautiful. You're, you're getting high points on each of these uh, things here, Matt. Well done. I'm so grateful. And like, you need to know that like, I got the three year loan from you. I had no idea what a healthy loan is. I had no idea like what to look for in a car loan. And like, you really made a huge difference in financing. And like, that's where you saved me so much money and like taught me so many things. There's no way I would have ever learned without like the advice from the homework guy. You know, it's interesting as long before I had anything to do with the car business, a banker friend of mine immediately told me, he says, Kevin, if you got to finance over 36 months, you cannot afford the car you're trying to buy. It's only the car business that has pushed this longer term because years ago in all the advertising that was done from the major manufacturers, they were all advertising 36 month loans. Nobody financed anything over 36 months. And it's just because of the pushing of all the products and fees and everything else they put into car deals, have these longer terms come around. Did you have any conversation with your own bank or credit union first, or how did you start the financing process? I went to my bank that I've been with since I was in high school. One of my friend's moms works at a local branch, so she's very good about like giving me good financial advice and stuff like that. And she, I did, I sat down with her and I asked her, okay, so what's it gonna cost me and all this other stuff. 
and she said, okay, you're very young, you do have a good credit score, but like you, it's just not old enough. And you're also asking for a fairly short loan. But I was grateful for her at least showing me that and telling me that. And like, this is what you can expect out of a lot of banks. You might be able to get a two or 3%. Like she was being very generous. She said, you probably won't be able to get that big of a swing, but like the best you would be able to get is nine. And more realistically, you might be able to get like 13 from other banks. Mazda right now is sponsoring 2.9% interest on all of their cars. So my loan with $2,000 down at about 14 and a half, the entire three years of interest at 2.9% is about $600. And like, that's important to do. Like you should check out a calculator and figure out this is what I'm paying in interest. And like, if I pay it off in a year, this is what I'll pay. It'll be 200 for me. Um, that number changes a lot with each percentage of interest. So like getting 2.9% was like almost nothing. It was as close to 0% down as I could get or 0% APR. And I was really happy with that. I was like, wow, 2.9% only realistically $200 because I plan on trying to pay this off within a year. I'm okay with paying $200 to get my Mazda right now instead of like six months from now or a year from now. So I wanna, I wanna go back to something. The reason you knew a 2.9 was a fantastic rate for you, you already talked to a banker beforehand. In my opinion, the rates that they were quoting you was very high given uh, your credit profile and everything else, the money that you had to work with, but the value of talking to your own banker or credit union first is that you have a clue what good rates are and what you actually qualify for. So obviously, if you are looking at potentially 11% going through your own methods, and then Mazda shows you a 2.9 on a 36 month note, um, that's beautiful. I want to go to a comment that you wrote here initially when we first uh, started exchanging stuff back and forth. And you said, you saved a lot of money just by taking out your phone. So this is sitting in finance, doing out the terms of the loan and telling the finance officer, these numbers are wrong. This is the price I'll be paying for my 36 month loan. This guy had to be having fits with you sitting there and checking everything that he was doing. Okay. Yes, you're, you're right. And I, I still love that. Here's what threw me off. He laid out the terms of the loan. And then he showed me a paper with four different monthly payments. And I said, something's wrong here. So I didn't even expect the lowest monthly payment to not be the thing. I thought that would be the actual rate just based off the form. Cause that's what it looked like. It looked like the lowest would be just my loan. I did it out. He got so uncomfortable. He started getting really like antsy and fidgety right before I was done. He asked, what do you want? What do you want? Like, what are you looking for? And I was like, just looking for like the right numbers. And he's like, do you want this itemized? And I was like, what? And he wrote 990 next to the lowest rate. And then he wrote like 3940 or something. That was the total cost of what those different options were. And just for perspective, the lowest number was $424 a month. My loan on just principal, which is all I wanted because I had a certified pre-owned. I didn't need these nonsense warranties was $393 a month. That's only a $30 difference, but it's a thousand dollars over three years. Like it's a huge difference. And like just pulling out my calculator and telling him, no, I'm paying $393 a month, saved me a thousand dollars. Or if you want to look at the other end, it was like $4,000. Wow. It was insane. It was crazy. Well, you know, along those lines, when I sit in finance, I'll actually go through and check everything that's there. And in total silence, sometimes sitting there 10, 15 minutes going through figuring out the whole thing because I just want to watch the guy squirm on the other side of the desk. I don't tell them what I do. And it's only if they start to become real jerks about the whole process that I'll pull out the homework guy card and I'll just ask him, do you want me to make you a hero on YouTube or what? <laughs> <laughs> so so that, and that, that usually, usually they get me out of the dealership as quickly as possible then. So anyway, I want to say, go I'm ahead. so grateful my mother checked it out today because there were little things about this dealership. I don't need to bring them up because at the end of the day, they were vindicated. They were okay. There were a lot of little red flags where I was like, this doesn't seem right. They could be ripping me off. And it genuinely ended up being that they just mishandled certain things with like the registration took a week longer than it should have. Those things didn't really bother me. The only thing that would have bothered me is if this car had some serious problem that was not disclosed to me. My mechanic was like, okay, your tire pressure sensor was off. That's a $2 fix. And I paid him $35 to just check out the car. Right. Like that's, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Even my mechanic who was like, no, you should get a Honda was like, you made a good purchase. Beautiful. So I want to talk about um, products for a moment. You mentioned forms used by the finance officer made it seem like 
their coverage options were mandatory. And that's a really common thing. Finance officers will claim either the banker wants you to have them or they'll present them to you in a fashion in which it makes it sound like this is how the loan's going to get uh, done is by accepting these coverages. Talk about the documents he was throwing at you that made it seem like coverages were mandatory for your car loan. Okay, so he had this blank piece of paper and it was just a, like like a normal invoice looking piece of paper. So you got like that top third of it is a bunch of different like writing and that was the different form options. And the bottom of it was all white with their, their footer of their place at the bottom. And I was like, okay, this is weird, whatever. These are the four numbers, blah, 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 blah. And that's when I pulled out my calculator and I started doing it. He took the form because I was so suspicious of it. And he started drawing like a bar graph in the big white space. So that white space was there for a reason. I'm barely paying attention. I just remember this. This is like in the back of my head listening while I type stuff in. He, t he makes a bar graph and goes, this is your 30,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty from Mazda. It's three years, blah, blah, blah. You have 3,000 miles left on it. He drew a bigger dotted line and said, this is your $100,000 powertrain warranty, which is like the important one. And he was like, if you purchase all of these things, cause he was also worried, like he could tell I didn't want any of these things. If you purchase all of these things, <laughs> we're extending this powertrain warranty to be the whole 100,000 and filling in these dotted lines. And that was what I said. So it's $393 a month. That's what I'm paying. I just completely ignored it and I looked at it at the end and I was like, wait, did he really just say and do all of this? Like, is drawing like an arts and crafts project in a finance office? Yeah, it's part of what they call the presentation. Now, you also mentioned fees. How did you handle the doc fee and the other fees that he said were going to be involved in the car deal? Not tax title license, any of that stuff, but all of the taxable fees that dealers just add to pad their profits. They didn't have any absolute nonsense fees like nitrogen air filling and stuff like that but mm -hmm. they had a document fee and it was 900 dollars. and i was like that's insane no <laughs> um that's too much and i know that's just you going to the dmv for me okay i'm in a separate state they were in mass and i'm in connecticut and you have to go to a separate state so i'll give you some brownie points for that being a little bit more difficult but like i'm not paying 900 dollars for you to stand in line at the dmv for me and I'm, I'm grateful I said something because then they took an extra week to go do that. So like there was literally no excuse when it's a week late. My parents were like, you need to get money off on the car for that. And I just didn't want to deal with that. That was too much. Like I wasn't right. that stressed about waiting a week. So I said, this document fee is too high. I want the numbers off. And like he went and he went to his manager and he did the whole thing and the song and dance. And he came back. And he said, we can't budge on the document fee. It's really like enforced by the state. That's what we have to pay, blah, blah, blah. But I'll knock $150 off for you just to show I'm working with you. And I said, okay, whatever. I'm happy with $150 off. I at least got something out of it that I never would have gotten had I not done any of my homework and realized like, this is what this fee is. Like I would have just taken their word for it and been like, okay, it's $900. Everywhere is $900 in Massachusetts. I was happy just getting something off the value of the car because that's what he said. He said, we can't take it out of the fee. We'll take it out of the value of the car. And I was like, oh, so, okay, I got it. This is how you handle these things. The car business is actually approaching a trillion dollar business. It's somewhere north of $700 billion. And so when a, when a dealer says that by law, we have to charge you this, they got complaints. Lawmakers got complaints. And this started spreading around the country because dealers played all kinds of games with document fees. You know, one customer would come in, you know, maybe like you that were better prepared and they'd charge you 75 bucks. Then a, you know, a little old lady would walk in and she'd pay a thousand bucks. And people started complaining about this huge disparity in document fees. So many states passed a law that said you have to charge all the people the same. So what do you think these dealers did? They ripped off the next person for 900 or 1,000 bucks and then told the next person, we have to charge all the people the same because it's the law. A, a gal that I knew did this work in the dealership and I figured out her cost to the dealer, her time with the dealer, how much they paid. I even included you know, her insurance, everything else. And the dealer charging $75 a copy made $275,000 a year just on document fees after they paid her. That's literally a house. Yes. Off $75. Yes, it is. So you mentioned about this, this guy who's uh, 50 plus years old sitting across the table from you. 
I love that you mentioned that a couple times that he actually left the office to go out and talk to somebody. That's that's really unusual. If I go in and sit in finance, that guy's going to get up at some point and leave because he's so uncomfortable. If if you are that good at holding them accountable, they're going to get up and leave because they have to go back and reframe. They don't know how to handle somebody who's actually done their homework. And all of a sudden, you have the upper hand. So the very fact that this 50-plus-year-old guy got up and left the office, it was because of you and your homework that he was getting up and leaving because he's sitting there walking out and talking to the sales manager, the general manager, and going, hey, here's what this guy's telling me. You got any thoughts on, on how, do I, how do I get him with this or how do I get him with that? So it was your homework that made him get up and leave. That's that's such an ego trip. Like that's such a good compliment to hear. And I, I don't know. I just I love that. And it's literally thanks to you guys. It's not like I would have known how to do this just on my own or like whatever. Like I, I did the research by finding you guys and just by wanting to watch these videos. But like you guys showed me the information. So like I'm so grateful for that. Love, love to hear that. And that's the whole reason that we do this. So I want to talk about the CPO briefly. You decided to go the CPO route on this car. Explain what your thought process uh, was there. In that little encounter with the sales guy, when he was like, what is the price of this car? Oh, it's 13.9. It might be this reason. It might be that reason. He said, oh, it's probably not a CPO. It's probably just a used car. Well, that would be a red flag. I'm not even going to do it. If there's, that would be like, they're clearly hiding something. And then he went to go check and he was like, oh no, it, it's a CPO. That just added even more. I already found a good deal. I knew the price was good. As soon as I saw on the Carfax that the accident was just like literally like nothing. I was like, wow, this is a really good deal. I'm just going to do it. Like it's a, it's a free warranty at this point compared to, right. you know, the other places where I was at 15.4 or even 17 for the same Mazda, maybe like 10,000 less miles and blue instead of black, which I would have loved, but that's okay. Like I was just, I was happy with that price and just getting a CPO was like a cherry on top. So let me ask you this little after action review. What are you most proud of? Or what do you think you did exceptionally well through this whole process from start to finish and ending up with a car you wanted? Absolutely. Pulling out my phone and doing the thing on a calculator and knowing what I was being charged is by far the happiest thing because that solidified a good deal. Had I just signed off on the lowest thing, it would have been like a mediocre deal at best. It would have been another thousand dollars. If I had picked one of the higher things, it would have been an awful deal and it would have been crazy profit for the dealer. But like just doing due diligence and pulling out my phone and doing that, and then also saying, I want a lower price on these doc fees and just getting that feedback of them actually removing the fee. Those two things were huge. And I think, I think the 2018, finding the 2018 unlisted was just luck. I don't think that's like me. That was just completely luck. But like those two handlings of those two things, I think I'm very proud of and I'm very happy I did that. Beautiful. So now having gone through this whole process, is there anything that you'd pick out of everything you did from start to finish that you think you could have done better? I should have gone for a test drive. I had a code reader and I had a quarter to check the tires and I had all the little things. But I didn't go for a test drive. And that's a huge risk. Please don't do that. Please go for a test drive on right. any car you're planning on buying. Like it worked out for me, but like it could have gone very bad. And there's a lot of little things you could do, like just turning on the car and checking if like the steering wheel is shaking. Like little things that will make sure that the car is just okay to even consider. So overall, from top to bottom, you did an exceptionally good job from this. Um, overall, for a first time buyer, we give you an A plus grade on your job from top to top to bottom. Um, if, if somebody had bought, you know, seven or eight cars, I'd say the, the thing about the test drive and the other thing I would have said, get up and tell them you're leaving. If somebody ever tells you they're going to take 150 bucks off a $900 dock fee, because don't pay them a red cent over 75 bucks. We get, we get feedback from people all the time on this channel who follow that advice exactly and they get the 75 or even a zero dock fee on the vehicle. And all the dealer does, because they have to show it on the contract, all the dealer does is take it out of the price of the car. Because that's all it is. It's just a price markup, nothing more. So any, any parting words of advice for homework guy viewers? Do your homework, first of all. Watch that video on the finance. There was like, watch all the homework guys videos, first of all. There was just a couple ones where you, you went over like the tricks in the finance office. It was like the top seven or top eight tricks that a finance officer does. Watch the buying a car in cash video, which was the first video I found from you. It's just valuable to watch, even if you're not buying in cash. It just mm -hmm. teaches you a lot about basic mindset with 
negotiation and bartering, which was so valuable and it carried into everything else I read and watched from you. Just do your homework and do your due diligence. Like, it's not that hard and it's a little bit like you feel bold the first time you do it, but it's right, right and like you need to do it for yourself. And also, you guys rock. For appearing on today's show, the Homework Guy team is going to send Matt one of these uh, awesome hoodies like this. It's also been a dream of Matt's to launch a YouTube channel and start sharing with the world. So that's where BD comes from. And so I said we'd come back to that. So we've agreed to help mentor Matt in his YouTube journey. The last thing, we're sending Matt what we think is an appropriate reward for such a great job car shopping and for appearing on today's show. So courtesy of the Homework Guy team, Matt's going to receive 500 bucks for us. Congratulations, Matt, on a job. Well Wait, what? Yes. What? Yes. I feel like I should be paying you for mentoring. Part of our intention with this whole thing we've been doing with car buyers is to go around and not only help car buyers get through the process, but to give back to people who are doing a fantastic job. And yeah, we want to help you and we, and we want to show some uh, reward for having done such a great job from top to bottom. And we want to also incentivize other people to think about coming on the show and sharing their car buying stories as well. So yeah, Matt, we're going to send you 500 bucks plus a hoodie and we're going to help you launch that uh, BD YouTube channel. And you know, the feedback and the stuff that you did was so great. Perhaps you have a role as a mystery shopper or doing some of those sorts of things for the Homework Guy channel. I want to thank everyone for coming back to the Homework Guy show. I'm Kevin Hunter. We'll see you on our next video. But Matt, you get the last word. And what is it? It's you guys rock. Homework Guy rocks. Kevin Hunter's the best.